okay so uh, previous recording you know was may not be useful so we are starting again uh, with a recap of uh, uh, lo1 and today we will be discussing lo2 so can i ask the difference between the ethics and uh, legislation and the regulation okay yeah so the um, work work ethics are things like you turn up on time you get to, you get the job done no, no, no. Okay, uh, yeah. Your, 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 IT ethics. Um, is that things like sticking to um, like the the Data Protection Act, um, um, m making sure that you keep your no. data safe? No. No. Uh, I'm not sure then. We did yeah last time. Uh. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You know, let me give you the quick uh, definitions to them and uh, you know uh, we move further yeah so it takes okay. you know the moral values we need to consider regarding the usage of it and with respect to human okay yeah so ethically you know everything that you use it should be morally you know uh, acceptable by the humans as well like you know the research into different you know uh, contradictory and you know disputed matters like a gene cloning and others. You do, you, did you get the record? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so those are basically the ethics. And um, the ethics, the, one of the core pillars of the ethics, let's say intellectual property, like a copyright and the patent and, you know, the trademark. If somebody is using your work, then ethically they are doing wrong, isn't it? Yeah, okay, yeah. So that's why, you know, the in order to consider the human values, yeah, with regards to the usage of information technology. So that's basically the ethics and the legislation is basically the law and regulation is basically that how we, you know, enact that uh, law into the organization. Right? Okay. Yeah. So let us see one by one. So the unit M, unit M is same. Yeah, so legisl legislation is a synonym with the statutory uh, law. Okay. Yeah. The law that has been, the laws that have been enacted by the legislature as well as those still in the process of being enacted. Legislation is both the description of the legal requirements of the uh, punishment for violating the law. So in simple words, legislation is the law or set of laws that have been passed by the parliament. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So all the laws which are, you know, uh, enforced by the government, obviously, you know, the laws would have been passed, you know, uh, uh, and are in front, in front of you by the government and the government is, you know, represented by the parliament, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously some of the laws which are, you know, the national level and some of the laws which are, you know, under the umbrella of international, you know, uh, laws, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So every government which is the which is working at the national level do consider, you know, the laws uh, by obeying the international laws. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, for example, uh, UK laws is under the, you know, uh, EU law. Yeah. Yeah. So first, if anything comes under the EU law, then UK has to follow, and uh, and then the UK may have their own specific laws, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Legislations are the law, and again passed by the parliament. So even if we take an example of EU, then you know there's an EU parliament, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Right. And then regulations, by comparison, are the ongoing processes of monitoring and enforcing the law. So not just how the legislation is being enforced, yeah, but also uh, also the very act of enforcement, where the confusion comes from in is that a regulation is also the name of document itself that details the act and the description of the regulation. Okay, so, yeah. so, in simple words, 
the regulation is the process of monitoring and enforcing the law right okay yeah like, you know we discussed last time the difference between the code of ethics and conduct of code uh, the, the uh, ethics and code of conduct you remember uh, yeah yeah so there's this kind of similarity in between the legislation and the regulation yeah okay yeah so yeah. like you know ethics tell you something and code of conduct tells you that how to you know act upon yeah is that clear now yeah, yeah. okay yeah like the it's it's best to think of it like this if legislation is a destination then regulation is how we get there okay yeah so yeah okay yeah regulations probably uh you know uh if you try to search on the internet you know that many of the documents say this is the rules and regulations yeah so yeah. Rule, the law and how you apply the law okay yeah how you apply yeah. how you how you enforce how you monitor and how you enact that particular law however they are not the two things basically okay yeah got it yeah okay good now the it specific legislation all institutions need to ensure that it facilities both corporate and local systems yeah so facilities are provided in accordance with relevant regulation legislation and that users are aware of their legal obligations so it is necessary for all institutions to make sure that whatever they use whatever the it facilities they use yeah so they need to use it according to the legislation okay yeah? and they need to be obeying the you know legally so they need to be aware of the legal obligations so yeah got it yeah just a question um yeah. what's a local what are local systems it says both corporate and local systems what what's a local system yeah local system is you know even if you use a, as an individual person right okay yeah that's fine yeah like you know yeah. if you are an even if you are an individual then certain laws are you know applied yeah i've got that yeah yeah so below are the details of some of the acts of parliament which govern the storage use transmission and collection of computer data okay so for example the laws are computer misuse act 1990 Consumer Protection Act 1987 Data Protection Act uh, you know 1998 do you know that uh, data protection act is replaced with another law yes gdpr isn't it yeah yeah so gdpr and then Dis disability discrimination act some of the laws you know are basically the related with the it as well as organizational however you know uh, somehow in these laws it is used in any ways in in any how okay yeah so these are the list of the laws yeah and uh, uh, apart from the discussion of these laws there is there are few more slides so let us you know uh, go through you know few one by one few of them yeah yeah so, the misuse act was designed to clarify the uk law uh, with regards to the intentional malicious use of computers for example many critics of the bill argue that uh, malicious intention cannot be readily established or proved now we you know there is a discussion yeah that malicious use is sometime not proved 
so this view is cited because of the case that gave the rise to the bill where the defendant's date could not be classified as a computer crime but rather as an inappropriate behavior okay yeah so yeah. the uk computer misuse act 1990 has acted as a blueprint for the other countries when designing new laws concerned with the computer crime okay can you But, for example give an example um that would be like if uh somebody was to hack into a system that would be uh, misuse uh yeah maybe but for example using the you know computer for illicit purpose yeah and uh, for example using for pornography yeah or maybe for example using the computer for someone uh, you know uh, blackmailing for example or or, or, or da downloading the downloading copy by material i uh, know not material no. every yeah if we say if anything goes wrong yeah but at some point you know people there is an argument that it does not is it, it is not counted as a crime <laughs> yeah but inappropriate behavior okay for example you know somebody is using you know computer at the office and uh, uh, let's say use some pornographic uh, you know videos or uh, photographs for example yeah okay yeah and uh, like it was not a crime and may not be but it is considered as a inappropriate behavior yeah okay yeah but very difficult yeah that somebody could say you know that it was done by accidentally or you know something like that because the idea says that defendants you know were strong enough to you know defend their problem and their uh, you know deeds okay so difficult to establish any proof any proof isn't it uh, yeah that's the just idea behind you know that computer misuse is you know a kind of uh, uh, an idea that that basically leads to the new laws related with the computer you know crime okay yeah simply so it's a kind of generic you know act yeah and it leads yeah. to the others like you know the copyright yeah maybe the other other you know laws yeah yeah okay consumer protection act is designed to protect the consumers and give them the rights when buying goods and services e.g. manufacturers are legally obliged to put certain information on products such as health and safety messages on the cigarettes right okay yeah okay, other example for example you know about if you are using let's say clothes yeah any information you know uh you see that what is uh, you know cloth is made of how do you wash it how do you protect it or uh, some of the products you know uh, are dangerous they explicitly explicitly need to put the tags you know uh, that keep keep away from flammable flames and uh, you must you must have noticed yeah 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 you, you need to protect your consumer from any harms you know from the goods or services and uh, their usage yeah so that a safety should be ensured yeah okay so obviously you know this applies somewhere when the use of computers like a labels and you know any anywhere you use you can advertise you know the cigarettes isn't it yeah yeah okay data protection act yeah and obviously you know uh uh you know very well about the data protection is a legal framework upon which to protect the privacy of personal data when used with information technology yeah so yeah. under the data protection act some of the information is being you know uh held secret and at some point you know uh you explicitly or implicitly agree 
to the firms that they will be using you know your data for different purposes yeah okay like you know when you are going to open a record you know then 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 your data is you know shared with other agencies and you know that and they act accordingly yeah 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 so obviously the data under the data protection act what is allowed what is not allowed yeah and uh, for security concerns and uh, serious issues your data is public isn't it yeah the relevant officials and you know the institutes can know your data however it is their responsibility their the the responsibility of the institute to use your data they make sure that your data would be held you know a secret isn't it yeah absolutely yeah so you need to make sure about it then disability discrimination act yeah so you should not discriminate anyone uh due to the disability and act to make it unlawful to discriminate against disabled persons in connection with employment the provision of goods facilities and services or the disposal or uh, management of premises make provision about employment of disabled persons and to establish a national disability council okay so that's it you must know Uh, according to this law people cannot be discriminated because of any disability they need to be given a kind of equal right isn't it yeah that's yeah that's right yeah you got you got to treat everyone the same yeah but as long as someone can you know uh, do their job yeah and their disability doesn't affect their role yeah i think so yeah 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 like you know some of the positions you know they require a kind of a very well active you know person for example and they need need a kind of mobility yeah and uh, mm-hmm. mobility you know meeting meeting people and you know at different working places different you know ground the uh, buildings and you know they shouldn't be you know obstructed yeah so that's basically the la but overall this law says you know that you know you don't need to do then yeah each <laughs> directive is for waste electrical and electrical equipment directives is concerned with the safe and the ecological disposal of electrical equipment and uh, however the onus to do this is placed on the equipment manufacturer so whatsoever the equipments you are using according to that law yeah you need to restrict those hazardous substances in electrical and electronic equipment directives okay anything for example like you know if you you should have noticed that your power plugs needs to be you know checked every year for the safety yeah yeah so that comes under to under this you know uh law and for example some of the substances uh, you know if organizations want to use yeah whether they need to be handled you know uh, normally or especially really depends so this law is you know also one of the laws within the organizations yeah yeah okay why this is related with the you know uh, it the yeah we you but with this one you have to make sure that you dispose of all the equipment properly that it doesn't just get thrown away with the normal waste ah uh, yeah uh, yeah and i mean this you know this is related with the electronics and electrical things and obviously the electrical systems electrical equipment is used in the it that's why you know is definitely relevant with this yeah 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 we 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 have to get um when we throw stuff away or we yeah. get a special a special company to do it and they have to give us a certificate yeah that, that's true yeah yeah west yeah, west and yeah that's true yeah yeah so lots of you know problems even like you know there used to be a crt monitors mm yeah 
and uh, it was not easy to you know just you know throw into the bin so definitely you know this uh, according to this uh, need to hand over and dispose of so through specific you know uh, company isn't it yeah yeah I, i don't remember crts i'm too young for that i think is it i remember yeah. i seen you know when i was in uni then there there were lots of you know even here in uk in 2007 i believe yeah okay And, yeah yeah they did use you know even for example you know the uh not for the computing purposes but for the uh research in the physics yeah okay yeah yeah the research in the physics they did have some kind of monitoring devices which which were based on the you know lots of devices they require a kind of crt you know monitors yeah okay yeah right freedom of information act yeah so freedom of information act you, you might know you know that uh responsibilities on public bodies to be open and visible about their work there are certain instances where exemptions can be made such as national security so freedom of in- according to the freedom of information act you know uh, for example home office or the revenue department or any of the you know uh, uh ministries they are they produce the public information isn't it okay yeah you know about it yeah vaguely yeah yeah so if you need anything any information regarding the law regarding the statistics or anything regarding immigration regarding you know the uh, criminality unless there, there there isn't any national security problem they can give you any information okay yeah yeah health and safety act yeah you need to make sure that uh, the place is safe for the employers employees the occupiers of the premises so very simple and you know very basic and very well known and uh, uh, you know act. yeah so this yeah. is yeah yeah so yeah. even you are uh, using the reason you know you are concerned with the information technology yeah and if you want to use the it and obviously it uses the equipments and the health and safety apply health and safety is important isn't it for your yeah. and others yeah yeah definitely yeah and then the, the legislation regarding the copyright design and patents patents yeah yeah so it was designed to protect the copyright of individuals and groups yeah so yeah ethically you know ethically you can protect your uh, work using copyright or trademark or intellectual uh, by the patents if you remember from the last uh, you know session yeah yeah so you are given protection according to this law okay yeah yeah ethically you you get the protection you hold the copyright you hold the trademarks you hold the patents on particular you know uh 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 of your invention and if you want to get it covered so this law covers those three things yeah okay okay yeah protection of environment act the is also known by the title environmental information regulations this act operates in a similar way to the freedom of information act it stipulates the right of access to the information on the environment held by the uk government and other public sector bodies yeah okay, so yeah. the act became law on the 1st of january 2015 or 2005 the regulations which were within were drawn up by the secretary of the state for the environment food and rural affairs using the authority of the european communities act 1972 yeah okay yeah so regulations of investigatory power act yeah rip or ripa 
this is the legislation covering the intersection of communications yeah so this this is related with the communications yeah so okay yeah communications is basically the acquisition and the disclosure of the data relating to the communications carrying out of surveillance the use of uh, covert human intelligence sources and the acquisition of the means by which electronic data uh, protected by the encryption or passwords may be decrypted or assessed access to provide for the establishment of a tribunal with blah 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 so uh, like you know when you are going to fill up a farm you know then you agree with these laws isn't it mm. some some okay. of the farms you know like a dba and you know others so maybe related with these things isn't it yeah so then telecommunications regulation act yeah so the telecommunications regulations yeah. uh in its full title lawful business practices practice and inception of the communication so the regulate regulations were created by the state of the uh, secretary of the state using powers granted in the regulations of investigatory powers act 2000 so what they what are the inter interpretations in these regulations uh, references to a business include references to the activities of the government department of any public authority or of any person to office holder a reference to a communication means of communication is a transaction uh communication which otherwise takes place in course of carrying out of out of a business uh system controller so overall telecommunications you know i'm you know i'm sorry you know this law uh haven't been you know in use but regarding the telecommunications usage this law applies yeah okay yeah so yeah. they make sure that how the intersection of the communication occurs yeah okay now now the question arises that what the regular uh, the regulatory issues can happen in the it and how you need to address them okay when approaching some issues encountered in a business it will be necessary to, to take account of all these things yeah and all the things and identify at least the following information so if anything in any issue happens into these regulations yeah into these ethical ethically anything happens wrong then what you need to know what ethical issue does the scenario involve okay right. what legislation is involved and why who are the stakeholders what to, what do they stand to gain or lose uh, lose lose yeah yeah what competing values exist which codes of conduct apply identify more than one potential solution after consideration of the issues involved outline what action you <coughs> in this situation make sense yeah so is so any issue like you know it would be hard to know or how it would not be you know is uh, feasible to discuss any particular issue because we can take an example yeah uh, into the case case study yeah and but overall if anything happens means if the there is a violation of the law okay if law is violated it means the law was not regulated properly isn't it yeah yeah then due to some consequences of that irreg- the consequences of that uh, Uh, irregularity for example yeah the issue caused because of the regulation and the law was not you know obeyed or enacted what you need to do you need to find out that what what ethical problem happened in the scenario 
yeah and yeah. under which law it comes and obviously being a manager yeah you need to know everything and you need to ask yourself these questions is it good yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's not only you know the uh, you know the case that uh, for example <clears throat> you know that you want to uh you want to address only one concern but for example you are a customer yeah and a company you know by mistake did something wrong with your name okay uh, yeah and it's not only you know uh, the ethical problem but the legal problem would be there the stakeholders maybe for example you would be affected and your data your accounts yeah would have been affected yeah you could gain something you could lose something yeah and uh, uh some competing values you know uh, could be incurred yeah and some you know conduct should have been uh, should have been you know applied code of conduct should have been applied and any solutions should have been more, maybe more than so one solution could exist yeah okay so overall you need to ask yourself these questions if anything uh, any issue occurs okay yeah next topic is the it contracts yeah so it contracts uh, 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 in this topic one of the uh, topic is the employment contracts yeah by yeah. law an employer must provide anyone who is uh classed as an employee with a written document yeah yeah so this document must contain the job title the pay hours of work access to in work benefits benefits such as uh, sick pay and holiday entitlement employment start date and notice periods employment conditions responsibilities and duties yeah yeah i um i had a job once that didn't have i didn't get this is it and yeah i didn't get it and the thing is when i went to leave yeah. i could I, the minimum amount of time i had to give notice was one week okay i looked it up on the government website so i only had to give one month's uh one week's uh notice yeah uh, because i didn't have a contract I okay. tried to try to get a contract but they never would never give me one. Yeah, so uh from the stuff you know where I took this yeah and uh, perhaps you know the yes it was uh, it's been taken from the government website yeah. Yeah. So it does say that uh, you need to by law an employer must provide employment contract. Yeah. obviously you know if they are not giving the employment contract it means they are employing you know illegally yeah okay yeah like illegally in a sense that uh, you know they supposed to uh, you know clear everything yeah when when you know uh, the employee needs to start when the employee needs to uh, you know and notice and everything is must otherwise uh, for example if we talk about the illegal employment yeah yeah like, like you know the those who take the social benefits yeah and uh, the employers may be you know employing uh, certain people you know on cash in hand yeah like you know the factories some people you know they take the benefits of job seeker allowances and you know they take uh, uh, you know they were working on cash in hand and there is no employment contract in between isn't it yeah yeah, yeah that's that's uh, so it's one of the requirement but oh, by law you have to do it yeah yeah then regarding the i3 the development agreement you know agreements so software development agreement is sometimes referred to as a master service agreement 
sets out the terms on which the developer sells and transfers customized software to a client that will uh, incorporate the software into its products, services, and processes. Yeah? Yeah. So, for example, uh, One of this, you know, software development agreement, and this software development agreement is entitled as this, effective date is this, and developer is this, and you know, the between two bodies, there is blah, blah, blah. The scope is, you know, mentioned, the duties are mentioned. It's a kind of one sample agreement. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Right, so that's the importance of the agreement. You are an IT professional, so you definitely, you know, should have a kind of agreement for the development. Yeah, okay. Then confidentiality agreement. Yeah, a confidentiality agreement is often used in situations where sensitive corporate information or proprietary knowledge is not to be made available to the general public. So this this you know agreement is made and uh, you know the example of this is also given on the government website which is basically the non disclosure agreement yeah so it says you know it could be done for the investors manufacturers and stockists and uh, this could be from accountants banks financial advisors insurance brokers business business coaches or marketing agencies yeah so yeah. So this is one of the contract which you know uh, is the confidentiality agreement. Uh, yeah. You need to use this in certain situations when you really want to keep the information secret. Yeah. Then collaborative agreement. A collaborative agreement is an agreement between at least two parties looking to work together on a commercial project on a collaborative or cooperative basis. Right? For okay. example, for example, if there is a there is you know a project between the police, yeah, and uh, NHS, for example, yeah. Yeah. So those those you know. Uh, the 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 work could be done on, for example, on the social issues, or you know the domestic violences, or you know any any brutal you know attacks, yeah, the, in the or you know occurred, for example, yeah, and uh, they are reported into the NHS, and the police can work together to find out the you know uh, uh, the reasons and you know to work better. So any collaborative, you know, agreement, not only between, let's say, the NHS and police, but maybe, for example, an institute and an industry, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I suppose it's a bit like the um, uh, the DVLA and the police. They, they work together, don't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's at the governmental level, government level. But maybe you know there could be lots of you know examples at the uh, private level as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then intellectual property uh, contracts agreements. So like we explained earlier, the intellectual property rights includes you know the copyright, patents, and trademarks. Yeah. So if you really wanted, for example, if you wanted to allow someone to use your work, then probably they could, you could use it via the trademark or copyrights, yeah? And, yeah. and under that contract, basically, you should be able to do it, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, <clears throat> if you are... Uh, making a video on the YouTube, yeah, and you are using a kind of uh, music from a third party, and which is a copyright, yeah, and then, you know, what happens, 
if it is found by the YouTube, then they automatically create a contract. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what the contract is made? Okay, the content is being used, but if you are happy to keep your content and the let's say any advertisement or revenue or any credit would go to the owner of the you know music, yeah, and uh, you can go ahead and continue with this. Yeah. Yeah, like you know in the uh, YouTube monetization, you must have heard about it. Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the al algorithms that they use, yeah. Yeah, so something like that, you know. That's the intellectual property contract. Some of the contracts, obviously, that's one of the example that automatically the contract is being made, you say, yes, I agree. Yeah? Yeah. Some of them you need to work on it and uh, really depends what is about, yeah? Yeah. Then the last topic, uh, legislation in the SCA, Human Computer Interaction Design. Okay. Yeah? There is a unit of Human Computer Interaction Design, a pure unit in level four. You remember you uh, completed, yeah? Yes, uh, I think that was the last one that I did actually. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Human Computer Interaction Related Public Policies cover a broad range of mandatory and uh, voluntary rights obligations and activities and are implemented across a broad spectrum of institutions, yeah, legal and regulatory documents and social, cultural, political and economic environments at the local, regional, national and international levels. Yeah. And okay. public policies also are shaped by information sharing and collaboration across public entities, businesses and non-governmental organizations, non-profits and other civil society stakeholders. Within these contexts, HCI researchers and practitioners can find how policies are enacted, implemented and interpreted. Okay. Yeah. So, the yeah. applications which involve the human-computer interaction, yeah, so the research behind it, the work behind it, should have been done according to certain policies. Okay. Yeah. yeah? The policies yeah. and you know the uh, kind of uh, uh, the regulatory documents, the legal documents, the social and cultural values, everything like you know. Uh, if I say that. If you want to design anything, uh, any invention, obviously, then certain ethics are, you know, uh, involved as well as if it is a kind of human computer interaction design. Yeah. 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 Then the uh, ethics, you know, are applied and certain laws, law is also, you know, uh, involved so it was just one of the topic you know here like impact of legislation in human computer interaction design that how functionality usability reliability efficiency i don't think so you know that there's a good matching of hci design and legislation but the idea is behind if you do design anything it should have been done you know according to the legislation and ethical you know, impacts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's it. That was the last, you know, slide. Okay. Yeah, that's, right. that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So any questions? Um. No. That's that's fine. No, I haven't got any questions at the moment. Um. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I see yeah, you then. Yeah. Um. Just one thing. Uh. The next lesson is Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, yeah, should be Tuesday normally. Yeah. Yeah. Can we change it to Thursday next week, if at all possible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'll um. Yeah, I'll speak to you on uh, Thursday then. Thursday, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I would keep in mind, and I would let you know the uh, Sabi know, and he will schedule it on Thursday. Yeah. yeah? Okay. All right. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Thanks. Bye.